Hi, I'm Chef Lynn, and welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Have I got a treat for you today, and it's standing right next to me. This is Brooke Wilson. She's a re recent, not so recent, graduate of the French Pastry School. Did I say that right? Yes, that's right. In Chicago? Correct, yes. All right, and she's an expert in cake decorating. So today we're gonna do some cake decorating. But actually, I think it's really big of me to stand next to her with that hair. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? We just did a, a shoot at Plum Market recently, and they said that people color their hair with pomegranate juice. You don't oh do gosh. that, do you? No, no, I've never <laughs> even heard of that, but that's pretty interesting. I'm sure it's all natural, <laughs> just a total natural beauty. Uh, thank you. Okay, but we're not here to talk about hair. We're here to talk about cake decorating, so I guess let's start with the tools of the trade, okay? What'd you bring today to okay. show us? Okay, well, these are kind of the basic tools that I think anyone who wants to decorate cupcakes at home would need to use. Um, okay. These are a few things that I always have on hand in my kitchen. Um, first off, I think a good spatula is definitely needed. I have a few different sizes here. So do you um, need all those sizes? or You don't really. This is basically if you have a small amount of frosting or something. Um, or so would this a large be better amount. for cupcakes? This I little think one? so. Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, if you're doing a small amount of cupcakes, then this is probably good. Um, or a large amount, a large amount of frosting. I have one um, of those, but it's for reaching into the mayonnaise jar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this one I use, this is a high heat spatula. So this spatula can go up to about 400 degrees, which is nice if you're using, um, making a frosting that needs to be heated up, like a French meringue buttercream or something like that. Okay. Um, so these are two different types of spatulas that I use for frosting cupcakes. This is called an offset spatula here, and this is a regular spatula. Let's bring those over here. So offset means here's the handle, and the blade is offset from the handle. That's all that means. Correct. And so why would you use one over the other? Well, the offset spatula is really nice because when you have a cake, we'll just use this as an example, when you have a cupcake, it gives you a nice angle, and you're pretty much oh, even. Oh, nice flat edge. Right, okay. exactly. Or when you're frosting a small cake, and you get down like this, Mm -hmm. You have a straight angle and your body is kind of parallel with it versus when you're using kind of a straight spatula like this. So um, if someone wanted to just buy one, they'd be better off to I buy... I would think an offset. Yeah, offset. straight for frosting cupcakes and for regular cakes as well. So. And these come in all different sizes, like for a cake you can... I mean, I, mine is like this long. Correct, right? yeah. And you can find those anywhere basically at Joann's or Michael's or any kind of cake decorating store like okay. that. Okay, so. which are all over town, on all sides of town, just Google cake decorating Detroit and you'll exactly. find them. So exactly. why would you even want this? Um, I think those are good for filling cakes, um, ah, little okay. cakes or regular, you know, cupcakes, things like that. Okay. Um, that's what I use mine for. Or for smoothing off a cupcake, you can kind of hold it like this and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, I use my offset a little bit more, but this comes in handy too. Okay. So the next tool that I always use is my ice cream scooper or cupcake batter scooper. Mm -hmm. um, and these come in all different sizes as well. Um, I have tiny ones for when I make the mini cupcakes and I have large ones for when I scoop my regular cakes. Okay. They come in all different sizes and they're really great for portioning and making sure that all of your cupcakes are a consistent size. I really like them and you can find mm -hmm. those in regular stores as well. Right. The next tool that I like is the bench scraper, the bowl scraper. Let's I'm bring sorry. that over here. So here's our bowl scraper. Okay. And this as is in yeah, as in scraping you out the scrape bowl, out the right? bowl. Okay. Yeah, you can get to the bottom of your frosting and make sure that all of the butter is incorporated. But I also use it a lot for when I am scooping down my pastry bags. So I push down the edge of the pastry bag, and you get all of that frosting to the bottom, and you're not making a mess all over your hands. Okay. Speaking of the pastry bag, I see you've got plastic ones there, mine are cloth. Why, I do. Why do you like the plastic ones? I like the plastic bags just because I think that it gives you kind of an opportunity to keep all of those different colors out together and you mm -hmm. don't have to, I guess, go wash a bag and come back. It's a time saver. It's really nice to just kind of have that bag and when you're done, get rid of it. It's great when you're in the kitchen with kids as well. Mm -hmm. Give them each a bag and you're done. You don't have awesome, sloppiness yeah. and mess and things like that. Are so they very expensive or? They're really not. You can get a roll of 100 and it's pretty cheap. It's about, I think, maybe the same price as four or five regular bags. So. Why not get a hundred? Yeah, why not get a hundred? No exactly. kidding. And Throw then it you're away. Done. Yeah. If you've ever cleaned a pastry bag, you know what she's talking about. Exactly. Where do you put it when so. to dry when you're finished? Right. And, and always stick it over the getting faucet. getting greasy in the inside and stuff. So I just prefer right. to be done with it. So it's much more sanitary too. Good. Exactly. Okay. So. So how do you put that thing together? Well, the next thing I guess one of my absolute favorite tools is this thing called the coupler, and it comes in two pieces like this. 
And basically, all you need to do is stick this coupler inside the bag. And um, depending on what I'm doing, I'll use a small bag, or these are the bigger bags right here. Um, and the bigger bags are kind of nice because you can fit more inside, but for right now, I, think I don't you like can to just fit a lot a inside bag. because then it's hard to control. Right, exactly. If you usually fill it just halfway, it mm -hmm. gives you a nice, you know, you're not going to spill it anywhere and you can control it a little bit right. better. And if you're playing with little kids too or oh, wanting them to decorate their own cupcakes, it's easier for them. Exactly. Um, but you push this inside, and one of the things that I like to do is kind of twist the bag and push it down so that it's nice and steady and secure in here. Um, and then we'll cut off the tip of this bag a little bit down from the coupler itself, maybe about an eighth of an inch. Okay, I'll take that. Thank you. So then we can put our tip on, and let's see, we'll start with one of my favorite tips, the small star tip. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, it's number 18, a Teco number 18. And a Teco and Wilton are probably two of the most common brands that you'll find. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of their numbers are pretty much the same. Oh, they're not always the same? They're not, I don't know if they're always the same, but I've found mostly pretty much consistent. Oh, okay, so. good. Because otherwise we should tell somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so you're just screwing that on. Yeah, screw it right on like that. So this makes it easy if you want to switch tips. Definitely. You don't have to take all of your frosting out of the bag and then exactly. put it back in there. Right, and you can keep changing it out and it keeps everything easy and you're not wasting another bag, so. Okay. It's almost like a reusable bag. Okay. Um, so before, actually we should backtrack just a little bit and talk about your cupcake recipe, right? Because okay. first thing you have to do is bake the cupcakes before we decorate them. Exactly. Right? So, so we're not going to bake cupcakes today. We didn't think you needed to watch us mix up cu right. cupcake batter, but right. Brooke has a great recipe to share with you. Exactly. I did bring my recipe for my vanilla cupcakes, um, and I brought a recipe for my vanilla buttercream, which I'll share as well. Um, but for my vanilla cupcakes, I'll share with you really quickly, you'll need one pound of butter. Um, and I like to use salted butter just because I, I like the saltiness. I think it brings out a little bit more of the flavor. Mm -hmm. So you'll need a pound of that at room temperature. Or if you don't have salted butter, you can put a little, a extra, little salt extra salt in. A little extra salt in, exactly. <laughs> um, Which I'm cups. inclined to do. <laughs> yeah, salt I know, I always do as well. <laughs> um, two cups of sugar, and you'll blend that together in your um, mixer. That's white sugar, exactly. granulated sugar. Can you use brown sugar? You probably could. I've never tried it. I always just do it with the granulated, but I'm sure it would be delicious. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We'll see. Or a flop. Somebody try it and let us know. <laughs> We're not going to. Um, and then four eggs and two egg whites. And I really like to keep my eggs warm. Um, not warm, but bring them to room temperature first. And the fastest way to do that, I have found, is to bring a bowl of water, warm water, and stick the eggs inside in their shell, obviously. Um, and then when you bring them out of that water, they're For nice and like warm. For like 15 and, minutes. Yeah, just about. Um, mm -hmm. And then they're warm and you can just put them in there. So four eggs and two egg whites. And you already talked about the butter, but if your butter isn't room temperature, 20 seconds in the microwave fixes that. Exactly, right? exactly. Okay. So we can speed this process up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, a tablespoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of almond extract, three cups of flour, one tablespoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and half a cup of whole milk. And that's another thing that should probably be around room temperature, so again, 20 seconds in the microwave will help you out. So you'll put all of those dry ingredients together, the flour, the baking soda, and the salt, and then you will blend together your butter, sugar, and mix that together until it's nice and light. Um, then you'll add the, excuse me, the eggs, as well as the vanilla and the almond extract. Add the dries as well as the milk, mix it all together, use your scooper. Um, <laughs> so your cupcakes that are out. exactly, exactly. The same they'll size. be perfect. Um, and then you'll bake that at about 350. And it kind of depends on how long it'll take. I would say anywhere from 18 to 24 minutes. Okay. Um, but in order to test those, I guess just pull them out. And I do the touch method. So when you touch it, it's kind of springy on top. Mm -hmm. Or and stick a toothpick in. Exactly. And the when toothpick it's dry, method. the toothpick should be Exactly. Should be dry. Did you say 350? Well 350, was that? Okay. yep. All right, great. Um, so that's a good recipe. Okay, so now I we've like got our use. cupcake done, and she's put them in these pretty little wrappers. Yeah, which is I really always a nice like way to finish off a cupcake. Right, exactly. So let's decorate it. Um, okay, so we have our bag all filled, and and notice how she put this on her hand and then folded the sides of the bag down. Right. That's a really crucial. 
Yeah, this is very important. And what I was going to show you guys, one of my favorite ways to do this, and this helps you to avoid air bubbles, I think, is to kind of put it on a cup or something of the sort, and then you have both hands free. And so you're kind That's of a good idea. flipped I over like that. and you're done. But the reason to fold this over is just to not get frosting up around all these edges. You want the frosting in a lump down in there. Exactly. So folding it back gives you then all that free and you can eat exactly. push it down easier. And it kind of gives you. you a limit too, so don't fill above that line. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so let's start with, I guess, some white frosting. So I always like to stir up my frosting a little bit first, just that also helps you avoid air bubbles as well, kind of give it a little mix. And we'll flop it in the bag. Try to push it down as much as we can. Oh, and I'm making a mess. <laughs> it's not easy to fill a pastry bag. It's really not, but I do find that when you have two hands free, it kind of helps as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll just get a little bit more in there. And then, use that bowl scraper that I was talking about. Okay. I like to kind of squeeze the bag as well too. I think that that kind of gets out as many air bubbles as, again, mm -hmm. as you can. And sometimes they're unavoidable. It just happens, but. Yeah, it, and we don't want to have air avoid. bubbles because it'll mess up our design. Exactly. Right? Basically, and then right. you have to start over right. and scrape it all off. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> So I like to take the scraper and just kind of push like this. And I've used even the end of a, of a um, spatula like that, the end of a knife, anything mm -hmm. like that will work just to kind of keep the edge clean as well as push all of your frosting out and you can... Yeah, you know, I love that idea. No I usually just squeeze it and then push it down using my thumb and first, right. first finger. Yeah, but this helps a that's lot. That's even better. Yeah. Um, so then kind of squeeze out the end just to get rid of all of that air here. There we go. Okay. So you've got the star tip on number 18. Number right? 18, yes. And this one I think is pretty versatile. I like doing um, a few different things with it. The first thing I guess we can talk about is the shell shape. Um, and that's kind of, I don't know, I like to think about it as a big belly. You'll okay. see it a lot um, on so, the bottoms of cakes and things. So. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So let's say you wanted to practice and you didn't want to, you weren't quite ready to go on your cupcake yet. How would you practice? Of course. Well, they sell different kinds of cake forms and things like that, but you can use anything that like you have Like styrofoam, in your home. you mean? Or? Right. They have okay. like a, a nice styrofoam form that you can use. Um, and they even have, I think, um, like stone ones that you can use that are a little uh -huh. more expensive. It would be you, crummy though to do a really beautiful design. Definitely. You're done. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, <laughs> but while you're practicing and first starting to right. work the tips, yeah, you can use it's a great option. At home. Or you um, can cover. Yeah, you can cover your. Here, like here, we covered one of my the lids exactly. to one of my bowls, so you could use that. Right. So that's practicing. a good way to practice, and you can scrape it right off, put it back in your bowl, and you're not wasting anything. Yeah, I like um, that. Don't waste anything. I like that. Exactly. I know. Um, so here's just an example of how you would do this. Um, shell shape. You start right here and then you put the pressure on and swoop, I guess. That wasn't a great example, but there's no pressure in the beginning and then you kind of pressure oh, it up. So it you up. start oh, and it's one. a nice little belly and up. Looks like it could know. be a swan tail too. Yeah, yeah. And I guess like that. Okay. on the ends of cakes, a lot of the times you'll see it kind of like that. Yeah. Um, a but lot, as a matter of fact. A lot of times, yeah. I have a, a very, feeling it hides the edge at the bottom yeah, of the cake. Exactly. <laughs> but um, it's a very traditional shape. Um, but I like okay. to do it on cupcakes a lot of times, going around in a circular motion. And it really is, it's a simple technique, oh, I like guess. like a flower. Right. Um, and it's not a hard one to master, but it's... Um, so if you really wanted to get fancy, you could make each one of those a different color, too. Oh, you definitely could. You definitely could. Or make each cupcake a different color. Right. Then what do you do um, in the middle? So I like to go around in a circle like that and then bring up a second layer. Ooh, yeah, I like that. A little bit smaller than the first. So we've got now it's looking like a daisy kind of yeah. flower. Correct. And then we'll do one more layer with about four or five. So she's shells. kind of putting each one in between the two underneath. Correct. Not right on top of it. Correct. Oh, so you don't even end up needing a middle. Oh, it kind that's of cute. ends up looking like that. Aw, so that's cute. That's one of the techniques that I like, and I think that, you know, it's versatile between a cupcake and a cake, and once you kind of get that 
technique down, you can use it in a lot of different ways. Right. I think cupcakes so. are a great way to practice. Then you oh, just have to get your, you have to get your pastry bag out and do it and practice exactly. all these different tips. Exactly. So what else can the star tip do? Well, this tip also does this really great. It's kind of like a poof. <laughs> I like to call it. I okay, guess. Okay. Now we're doing the poof. Um, it's just the poof. I'm not really sure. Maybe a star. Maybe it's a star. I don't know. But this is oh, a okay. super easy one that yeah, you I see would a call lot. Yeah, a star. I think. Um, so you can use that for filling in, like if you have a line drawing or something. Of course, you can yeah. Fill it in with different colors. Right, and this one I I like to do on a cupcake because you can kind of build off of it. I guess mm -hmm. we'll use this one, and I love these colored um, wrappers, cupcake liners. Mm -hmm. They're so great. I um, there's a website that I use called Bake Deco. Nope, I'm sorry, Bake It Pretty. Bake it pretty. Bake it pretty, and they have all these beautiful liners that I just love. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah, and there's also my favorite, which I promote all the time um, is jbprints.com. Oh yeah, JB has Prince is fabulous wonderful. decorating tools too. Fabulous everything tools. So if we do this just in a round, that's but cute. I like to build off of it a little bit more mm -hmm. and kind of give it. So how do you know when the consistency of your right. frosting is right? That it's not going to collapse. Well, I think that when I am mixing it in my mixer, my stand mixer, mm -hmm. um, I'll pull up the, the blade and when I scoop it with a little spoon, like sometimes I'll use my offset or something like that and I can kind of feel when I stand it up like this, if I look and it's kind of holding its shape, mm -hmm. I know that it's going to be a good consistency. Oh, okay. Um, good. And a lot of times, like especially when you're making a rose, you know, on, on a lot of celebration cakes you'll see that rose. Right, um, okay. That That's needs to be a lot of a, stiffer though. That it's needs a, a bit of a kind thicker of frosting. frosting. Exactly. So the kinds of frosting are? Well, there's the royal icing, which is what you'll see on a lot of sugar cookies. Okay. Um, and that's a hard icing. It's a you know, it's a con consistency where you'll you'll touch it and it's rock hard. Okay. Um, and then there's buttercream frosting, which also has a lot of different variations. I use mm -hmm. an American buttercream, which is basically butter base with confectionery sugar, salt, vanilla, and sometimes milk. Okay. Um, and that, that's the recipe you're. That is the recipe that I am okay. going to give. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also there's French buttercream and things like that. Um, and they all have different purposes. Exactly, exactly. A French buttercream can be used for filling, or there's a Swiss meringue buttercream, which is heated. There's a lot of oh different Oh my goodness, types. there's a lot to this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no there's wonder you have to go to school and exactly. become an expert. <laughs> okay. Um, but I can share with you this buttercream recipe, which I found really versatile. I can use it for fillings. You know, I can sometimes add cream to it to make it like a mousse. Okay. Um, Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, it's really nice. But for this recipe, all I do is usually I whip about one pound of butter. And again, I use salted butter. Um, mm -hmm. And I found that if you whip the butter for about 15 minutes beforehand, it gives it a much creamier and silkier finish, I guess. Awesome. Um, That's a good tip. Yeah, so after if that... If it's at room temperature. Exactly, of <laughs> if course. If it's not, Again. still get the chunks. Don't <laughs> right. ask me how I know that. <laughs> Again, 20 seconds in the microwave will do really well. Um, so to that I add one teaspoon of salt as well as about a tablespoon of vanilla. And then we add about four to five cups of confectionery sugar. You can add a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on, I guess, the taste that you like and the consistency that you're looking for. Because you can make, like we were talking about, the rosettes or the roses that you mm -hmm. see on celebration cakes with this buttercream, but you do need it to be a little bit thicker. So for that, I would add maybe five to six cups of sugar. Okay. Um, so it just depends on the consistency that you're looking for. And you can add milk to this. But again, you would like it to be at room temperature. I sometimes don't with the butter that when it's nice and whipped, um, I, I like the consistency of it and you can leave it out uh, oh, during the day and yeah. it's really nice no because eggs. then you get it nice and, and soft and pliable and usable okay. versus when you take it right out of the fridge. So Okay. Yeah. All right. That. So if you were, let's say someone wanted to just start, you would obviously um, buy the star tip. What other tips might you... The next tip I think that I like is just this simple round small tip. And thanks to the use of this wonderful coupler, yeah, I can just great. transfer it. And let's see, the number on this, this is the number 12. And this is a really nice tip. I like to use it on small cupcakes a lot, the mini cupcakes. Mm -hmm. um, and I really so like... So this one is just a bigger star. Yeah, it is. Tip. And this okay. one, if you look at this, let's see, there's a difference between these two tips here. This has the rounded edges and this will give you a like an inverted kind of star and this one will give you a nice round star. I see, okay. And this is great for making rosettes. I don't know if you can 
see this cupcake here, but this will give you a really oh, good yeah. it's a rose cupcake. on the top. Yeah. And then you just did that by kind of swirling around. Right, bringing around. it around and around. Okay. Um, anyway, so the next tip that I would really recommend is just this plain round tip. It is so versatile and it gives you the opportunity to kind of decorate at will. Okay. Um, would you use that for writing a name? Or? No, I think that for writing, this is the, the third tip that I would recommend is a, a number three or a number two tip. Okay. This is a number three here, and I think that this is a great writing tip. Okay. Um, and for practicing writing, I think one of the best ways that you can do it is go online, find a cake that you, you know, you like someone's writing, or even write it out yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, practice a few times. And kind of trace it. Exactly. Set it down, put some plastic wrap over it, Happy and just practice over and over. You. Exactly. Joe! <laughs> okay. Practice over and over, and I guarantee that you'll, you know, improve. Mm -hmm. I know I have. Okay. So this is another one of my favorite tips, and even just on these mini cupcakes, one of my favorite and most simple techniques, just a little poof like this. Mm -hmm. It looks so cute and simple. Oh, that looks good. I love that yeah. ratio of chocolate. It's, I know. Frosting the cake. <laughs> yes. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> but with a few little sprinkles, it's just so nice cute, and yeah, dainty. It's, cute. Yeah, it's, it's cute. perfect for a little party. So, Like you have some up here. Right. Some little examples of what you're doing Yeah, exactly. There. That's like, really cute. Yeah, I like those ones a lot. Um, but this one, again, it does really well with a similar technique to the to the shell that we were doing with a um, like a teardrop shape that we do. Oh, that's nice. So it goes up and down like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that better. Yeah, it's a really nice I shape. Think it's that's a little really more um, elegant. Yeah, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I do enjoy that one as well. Should we do? Okay. So we had eighteen. On? And the this tips is you would number 12. 18, 12, and 2. Yes, 2 or a 3. I think a 3 might be a little bit thick when you're practicing. I think oh, a 2 okay. is probably the best. Mm -hmm. so, I always admire people who can write on cakes. It's not I know, the easiest it's thing really, in the world. really difficult. So in yeah. school, we would practice for an hour every day. With, oh, did you really? Yeah, I had practicing in chocolate and frosting and everything like that. So I believe it. I definitely mm -hmm. improved, though. So practice does make, you know, makes a difference. Perfect. So, exactly. <laughs> Perfect, almost. And you can say the word, the P word. Oh, no, the P word. OK. So I think that um, other tips I would recommend, I think those are probably my favorites. If you want to kind of venture out a little bit more, this is um, a French tip. It has a few more prongs on it then what number is that this would be a 199 okay so it has Ooh, a few a more tips. prongs on it than a star tip um, so it gives you a similar look to the shell or to the star but it, it gives it a little bit more dimension I used it on this cupcake here uh -huh. um, so you just yeah I plopped did it, it the same way as this exactly plopped it on right using that tip. right exactly but you can do it um, the same way with this like shell belly, things like that. Okay. Um, and then the other one I would recommend if you're adventurous is <laughs> the rose tip or the petal okay. tip. Um, and this is the tip that you would use if you're trying to make those celebration cake roses. Okay. And what number was that, did so we say? This is a 104. 104. So, and these come in different sizes depending on the size of rose that you would want to make. Right. So. Okay. Feel yeah. up to whipping out a rose or? I can try. <laughs> the um, this buttercream might be a little bit thin, but I can definitely try to do it. That's all right. It takes quite a while to make a rose, so I'm not going to make her yeah. make her do it. But I want to show you also, this is a great idea. Use your tips to fill cookies. This is one of Brooke's um, most this is one popular, of most popular, yes. popular desserts that she makes at Love and Buttercream, exactly. which is the name of her company. <laughs> so you can see, you can find Love and Buttercream on Facebook. You can find it on Twitter and at loveandbuttercream.com. Exactly. Isn't that an adorable name? <laughs> Thank you. And so what she's done is she just used which tip here? To um, I did, I used, let's see, it's a larger version of the 18. So it was just a star tip. I believe it was actually this one right here. And this okay, is a, so just a star tip yeah. and you just kind of went around in a circle. Exactly. Inside the cookies. And then you can see the delicious carrot in there and she's got raisins. Oh, those look really yummy. Thank you. Um, oh, excuse me, I'm drooling. Okay, <laughs> and what did you, how about this one? What did you do with that one? This one right here? Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually kind of a different take on a little cupcake. Um, and sometimes I like to do them without the liners just because I think it gives them a more natural kind of melts in your mouth. I really want to bite into that kind of uh -huh. look. Yeah, um, it does. I, I really do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, really I, I want to eat it. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I just cut off the top and used again that star tip to... You cut off the top of this thing? Yeah, cut cupcake. off the top of the cupcake. Okay, because it had 
risen up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cut off the top. There's no such thing as an ugly cupcake. You can make ooh, it beautiful. Ooh, I like that. That's <laughs> right. There's no such thing as an ugly cupcake. Um, yes. But use that star tip and then kind of sprinkle it up and gave him a little hat. So. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and I like beautiful. the addition of the color to the with, with the sprinkles right, too. That adds course. a lot and it's just a tiny little sprinkle. Definitely. That's My sprinkles last really me need. like years. Don't yeah, So of I finally just have to throw them away because I think they can't possibly be edible. Right. So exactly. it's a good idea to use them exactly. now and then. So was there anything else there that was a little bit different? This one you used the swirl. Yep, that one. This, has these the are swirl. your stars, and then those the are the. That's the first thing one you did. That I think is kind of interesting. I used on this one, and I'm not sure if you can see it at home, but this is. I used this luster spray, oh. um, which you can actually find uh -huh. at Michaels or at any kind of craft store like that, and um, I think it gives just a really unique look. To yeah, a cupcake, I love that. and it's yeah. totally edible, no problem. Oh yeah, it's totally it comes edible. In gold and silver, right? Gold and silver. This one is a pearl spray ah. that I used. Um, so nice idea for a theme exactly. party. Exactly, it's You've really got really gold fun. Gold and silver streamers and all. Yeah, that. it's oh, really great. Really cool. So that was kind of an interesting find that I liked that I thought I would share. So great. Well, yeah. thanks, Brooke. Of, of love and buttercream. So I really enjoyed the me. the demonstration, it's and so it's much fun. Um, it's beautiful, and I'm sure that people will try this at home. So thanks for coming and please find her on Facebook and Twitter and check out her website, Love and Buttercream. Thanks a lot, Brooke. I'm Chef Lynn. Enjoy.